Today on Mar Jennings Home and Garden, I'll take you on a private tour of my front garden. Sissy Biggers is here to help me make organic doggy biscuits. And Angela will show us what's hot in women's fashion. Beat the heat with my refreshing bumblebee drink. Hi, I'm Mar Jennings and welcome to my home and garden. In 1996, I purchased this house with a very clear vision on what I wanted to do. I've learned a lot along the way and now I'm here to share with you some of those things that I've learned. Now, I call this reality TV. Now, why is it reality? Because you will be able to do the things that I can tell you that I've done. If I can do it, you can do it. Come with me as I give you a tour of my front garden. We're gonna start with my peonies, my pride and joy, and they're just perfectly blooming right now just for you. So we're gonna come over here and I'm gonna show you how amazing these peonies are. Now, to do something and to do it well, I believe in doing quite a bit. So I have 22 peonies here. Now, I didn't spend a lot of money on these peonies. I basically bought them at your local grocery store. But I think what they really like is that I put them with the Vinca Minor. This is also called the common name Myrtle. And it works really well in perfect harmony together. And apparently, they really like it here. The blooms are just simply breathtaking. And they come back year after year. Now what I like to do is I like to put things intertwined together. Because I have this picket fence here, I have a clematis that's also growing in perfect harmony with the peonies. Now that's growing on the picket fence and I have the peonies in front. So all together, it's a really great party going on here. Here we come into the corner, which was a very challenging area for me. It was challenging because it was right onto the street. It also gave me a clear view of my neighbor's front yard. So it was a tough area to decide what I wanted to do with it. I took and I found the Annabelle, which I absolutely love the Annabelle, and has tons of blooms, and no matter what I do, it will bloom year after year. This is a fantastic hydrangea. If you don't have it in your garden, I highly recommend it. Now, I featured this corner area, and it, instead of trying to avoid what was obviously a very difficult area to design, I featured it. So I put this wonderful statue, and then some wonderful variegated ivy, and a great old stone urn that's mossing over beautifully. Now, to have a garden to be able to enjoy it morning, noon, and night is really a treat. So what did I do? I made sure that I highlighted certain areas in the garden to make sure that I can enjoy it at night as well. Now, I'm going to take you to a wonderful tree that is my absolute favorite, and I'll tell you why it's my favorite tree. One, it was a gift. Two is a very fragrant, late blooming tree. This is called the Styrac japonica, and it's very, very special. It's here in my front yard where everyone always comments, where's that great fragrance coming from? It's coming from the tree. Come with me as I show you my PG hydrangea. Now this PG hydrangea I put in when I purchased the property, so it's one of the few things that are still intact from when I bought the house, and I absolutely love it. Now the reason why I love it, it has wonderful blooms each and every year, guaranteed. And it dries beautifully right on the tree. What I like to do is I cut the pieces off when it blooms and I give them all to my neighbors. It makes me, I guess, a pretty good neighbor, but it's a wonderful tree to have in any garden. Join us next time when I give you a complete tour of my side garden. You don't want to miss this. Hi, Mar Jennings here. Here are some tips for a successful relationship with your topiaries. Trim topiaries frequently to encourage growth. Prune every six weeks in the summer and every eight weeks during the winter and follow the existing form to maintain its shape. Keep your topiary in a well-lit area, but not necessarily in direct light. If you have a variegated ivy, you want to keep in mind that it will need more light than a dark green ivy. If you have topiaries outdoor, water and mist regularly. And there you have it.
Don't go away. When we come back, Sissy Biggers is in the kitchen to help me make some fabulous organic doggy biscuits. You don't want to miss this. Your pet has a personality all their own. Like you, they like to play hard. They're outspoken, competitive, and enjoy their quiet time. They bring a smile to our face every day. More than just a loyal family pet, they're part of the family. And because their love shows no bounds, neither should yours. Pet Pantry Warehouse in Greenwich. Relax. Replenish. Rejuvenate. Retreat. Renew. Whether you choose a single service, a day spa package, or a series of cosmetic treatments, Dermage Aesthetic Center and Spa will indulge your senses. Dermage, Danbury Road in Wilton. We're in the kitchen today because Corky and all her four-legged friends love these delicious cookies. Made with 100% organic ingredients, this will be an easy recipe that will delight any dog. Sissy Biggers is here to help me make some for Corky. Hello, Mar. And you know, when I arrived today, I smelled something really good in the kitchen and I discovered it was the dog biscuits That's in the right. oven. That's right. I had a little head start this morning. They smell great, so I'm really excited about this. Well, this is a very simple recipe and I know Corky absolutely loves these cookies. And you take such good care of her, so you're really making sure the ingredients are really good for dogs. All organic. That's so important for me. Okay, so let's just put her down for a moment and let's just run through what you need for this okay. project, okay? You're going to need a stick and a half of unsalted butter, two cups of shredded organic cheddar cheese, and a cup and a half of whole wheat organic flour. This is gorgeous looking flour, I love that. Okay. Should I go ahead? Go ahead, and you're gonna pour that into a bowl. Now you use the unsalted butter, is that because dogs don't like salt? I just prefer it. Well, you could use and for regular baking, butter. most baking recipes call for unsalted, right? Right. All right, there's you're gonna your shredded cheese. You're going to put it all cheese. together. Now, and the how butter. do you suggest I do this? Now, what you're going to do is very important when it comes to the butter is that you want to make sure that it's at room temperature. Right. Because that makes a big difference because I've done this before where the butter's kind of cold and it's kind of harder to work with. So I'm just dropping this right dropping in? Dropping it right in. Am I using my greatest tool in the kitchen, my hands? Yes, you are. Oh, goodness. Okay. You're going to put that right in. Here I go. Dive right in. And you're going to make this Ooh. into a Play-Doh consistency. <laughs> Okay. Feels nice, doesn't it? Um, Mar, do you always have your guests do the dirty work? <laughs> Absolutely. I've done this so many times, I'm taking a break because I did it earlier this morning. And you will see that it will all start coming together. It smells really good. And it smells great, right? Let's kind of just get that up so the camera can see okay. how you're really digging into that. <sighs> You're going to work with this for quite some time. It's going to take about 10 minutes to actually okay. work in all the ingredients. All right. 
all right? And you'll get it to a consistency, and then what you will do, it, you will put it into a ball like this. Okay. Okay? Well, I'll just... <laughs> you can put some of that down. Okay. Or Thanks. lick your fingers if you like. <laughs> Why don't I have Corgi come over? <laughs> you love that, right? And That's it's fun. It? You're going to work it into a ball okay. like this, and then you're going to put it in the refrigerator for about 20 minutes. And it's just going to kind that. of... How, okay, good. See that? Not too cold. Not too cold. Put it in the refrigerator for about 20 minutes. Okay. And then... What what you're going to do is, let's put that over here. Am I going to roll it out? You're going to roll it out. Now, when you roll it out, because we're working off of a wood um, countertop here, we can work right on this surface. We're going to use this, right? Put a little flour. Yes. That much I know about baking. See that? I just got to say again, I love this stone wheat flour. Oh. It's so great. Isn't it fantastic? And you know, I know Corky enjoys it. You just as know well. it's good for you just eat when you're working with it. Exactly. Now, here you okay. go. And you want to just push it. And you want to start working it to a flat surface right. with your hands first. See, I'm helping you out. I appreciate that. This needs a little elbow grease. Okay. This is a serious rolling pin. It's a good rolling pin. Uh, you know, it's all about having the right It's equipment. really heavy. Yes. Which I think is going to work for this because it's going to give that nice weight you need. Should I go ahead? Most definitely. Go right ahead. And you're going to lay it out. Now, you got to understand, you're not going to get it completely flat for the first time and get all your cookies. Now, depending upon, you, so you can pick you're, it up in a, you're in a hurry here. Let me let me just show okay. you, because you're breaking this all up. All right, yes, what you want to do is break it into little sections and kind of get it flat, okay? And go ahead and give me that cookie Which, sheet that's on the okay. side there. So it, you don't have to have it perfect if you were making Christmas butter cookies or anything. You can, no, no. You can sort of use your sections as they flatten out. Exactly. Okay. And that's what I do. And now I have all these different type of cookie cutters. And what this I This one's can a riot. Use, it's, <laughs> little it's fire hydrant. Fire hydrant. Okay. So cute. And there's a larger one, of course. And there's different size. I like the bone because it really represents yeah. uh, the dog. Right. So I like using the smaller bones. And you're just going to press that. Okay. And see how we're making... Oh, they're so cute. Can I put a Go fire ahead. hydrant in? Go ahead. And see how that popped out for right. you? That's okay. great. You're just going to put that on a cookie sheet. That's easy enough. Good. Now, I preheat the oven to yep. 375. Okay, and then I will put this in and I will watch them 20, 25 minutes. Again, depending upon the size of the actual biscuit. So here's an example. Perfect. These Good. are all done. Uh, should I get the ones that are in the oven? Go ahead and take those out. Those were finished earlier today. I thought that, that Mar was making me a homemade breakfast when I arrived, but it was the dog biscuits. It was they the dog smelled biscuits. so good. So you can see here. So pretty. And they come right out, and they should be able to move freely. And there you have it. I mean, it's just a simple dog biscuit. And it's organic, so I'm... Now, this is the first time I actually tried it. You know, yum. Mm -hmm. Right? You know, how nice for a dog, the two of you sharing mm. the same, same little biscuit. treat. Can you believe it? We're eating Corky's dog biscuit. And I know she's looking. Where is she? Corky. She, Corky. Come on. Come on, girl. Good girl. Come on. You want a cookie? Mm, these are, you know what? Come on. I'm serving these at my next dinner party. And she devours them. Mm. Oh, you love those, don't you, Corky? Not yeah. bad, huh? So a simple, simple recipe that your pet will That's really fun. enjoy. Mm. Great treat, and you can do this at home as well. Build some muscle. Delicious. I enjoyed that so much, and I think it's a great idea to just put in a little wrap, pretty wrapper with a little ribbon, bring it to somebody's house. Definitely makes a great little gift for anyone that owns a dog. Well, thank you, Mar. I well, learned something, great. as I always do. You're going to finish that now. Yes, sir. <laughs> Get to work. <laughs> These freestanding pyramid-shaped trellises for placing anywhere in the garden that you want a vertical accent with a classical style to proportions are called tutors. My garden is filled with a variety of different types of tutors. These are fun additions to our garden beds and they come in either wood, metal, or copper. They add great height and architectural detail to an otherwise low garden area. In my garden, I embellished my tutors with colorful clematis, climbing roses, 
I choose climbers with low growing habits, that way they don't overwhelm the tutor and keep the pruning to a minimum. Adding tutors to your garden are absolutely fantastic for many different reasons, but for the obvious one is that they're beautiful. You can spray them and change their colors. Whatever color you like will make a great addition in your garden. My rule is when I see one that I love, I don't worry about where I'm going to place it, I buy it. And you too can do the same. I guess it's like having shoes, you can never have too many. Having two tours are absolutely perfect, marvelous to have in the garden. When we come back, my glamour girl Angela will show us what's hot this season in women's shoes and accessories. Don't go away. So many choices, so little time. Pet Pantry Warehouse in Greenwich. Want a real workout? Want a great body? Callous on physical arts, real martial arts, real fitness. Visit our 12,000 square foot center in Norwalk or our new studio in Wilton. My next guest I've always referred to as my glamour girl. Angela is here today to show us what's hot in shoes and accessories. Now you have to understand, I met Angela at least 10 years ago while I was on the ice and she ran out in this big <laughs> fur coat while I was skating. She said, oh! Oh, do you teach skating? And I looked at her and she was gorgeous then. She's gorgeous now. She's here to show us a little bit of what's in style for this year, for 2006. Well, yeah, what's happening this season is a lot of neutrals and a lot of fabrics that are natural, like linen. Um, I brought four great shoes. I love these shoes. And you know, they I have are. a shoe thing. Mm -hmm. I always tell you, oh, yeah. okay, when you see me, <laughs> put on a good heel. Who Don't doesn't? wear any flats. And she's always like... So right, I brought four heels. Four great heels. Mm -hmm. And uh, tell me what you have here. Okay, this is the hot shoe of the season. This is the hottie. This is a Michael Kors fabric shoe. And it's cork A wedge. Here. It's a wedge. The wedge is the big thing for 2006. It's got the braided ankle. You could wear it with culottes, crop pants, jeans, long skirts. Fantastic. That's the hottie. Fantastic. And great? what about this one here? This one I own myself. This is a great Prada cream with black stitching. Goes with anything like black um, cream, anything but white. It's just a great I, I love high that. open heel, open toe shoe. It's I love great. that. And it's very 50s because we're kind of going back to something well, old, to something new. So the open toe is... Vintage is always very big and it's bigger than ever. So really when you're updating your wardrobe and you're buying things, you want to keep in mind that you're buying fashion, but if you're buying well, things that are classic, they right. will always come back. Have fun with it. You know, put something old, you know, with something new. Put something... Um, Mix and magic, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. this one Shouldn't here? be all one thing. You okay. should have fun with shoes. This is a very fun shoe. Look at this. The big, huge floral flower on the blue satin. That's by Etro. And it's a sling High bag. High heel. And I love Really fun bags. on the foot. That should be your focal point. Okay. When you're wearing that, that's it. That's all you need. And tell me about this one here. This, this is a Manolo Blahnik. That's a Manolo. Um, animal prints are always very fashionable. For spring, fall, they'll never go out of style. It's just a great mule. And tell me about okay. this bag, because this is a very large bag compared mm -hmm. to the little one that you have well, here. we have a range here. This little one is a Bottega, and this can be a little luncheon bag. This could be a dress evening bag. This is a what fabulous is this bag. Made out of? I would love to own this bag myself. This is pressed leather, all lace trim detailing. Lace is very big, and that is just a gorgeous little dress bag. It's Love fantastic. it. Look at that. Fantastic that gorgeous? accessory. And the big one here, this, this is, is by Chloe. This is Chloe. This is the bag of the season. Look at that color. Let's it's like a caramel. Hopefully you get to see that on you TV. You can put your little dog in here. You could. You right? could put 
My main Engine thing is that. a new dog. <laughs> so, right? So you could put him in there with Bobo? He might fit in there. Look at the braided detail, the hardware. This is the bag. If you're going to buy a bag, look at that. That is a great bag by Chloe, and the color is sensational. Fantastic. Then Tell me we here. have um, Jill Sander, which is a beautiful cream color, still in the neutral palette. Everything's very neutral except for the Etro shoe. And ribbon detailing on clothes and bags, that's very hot for 2006. So ribbons. So well, this is lace, just an accessory. Just right. Tied. It's just a really pretty little detail. You could tie it, you could leave it loose, you could do whatever. Okay, and this one over here has kind of larger buckles. This is a Prada. It's very vintage again looking. See the front? It looks like a vintage logo, which is kind of logos are creeping back now. They're just all really beautiful bags. I mean, you can't go wrong with any one of these for day. You could wear them at night. This one is a great luncheon bag. You could wear that. That's just, they're all just sensational. They're fabulous. Hot, hot picks for 2000. So natural colors, natural cork, colors. Okay, larger very bags, big. details, braided bows. Those are things to look for when you're shopping for this year's accessories. Well, yes, you can do um, embellishments. You can do shoes that are colorful. But I started with very neutral, very simple, because white's very big, and all of these, most all of these things can go with that color palette. And we have to thank Mitchells of Westport for providing me with all the bags and shoes. They've been terrific. The gang's great. They're fantastic there. So now that you have all these great ideas and tips for this season, I know you will look absolutely fabulous. So um, which oh. ones do you own? Which one are you going to buy? I want that one and that one and I think everything. I don't know if I should go for this. Don't touch that dial. When we come back, I'll show you how to keep cool this summer with my favorite bumblebee drink. Replenish. Rejuvenate. Retreat. Renew. Whether you choose a single service, a day spa package, or a series of cosmetic treatments, Dermage Aesthetic Center and Spa will indulge your senses. Dermage, Danbury Road in Wilton.